Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another quick Flutter tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how you can store data in your local storage on your physical device using Hive. It's actually really easy to use, so I'll show you how to do the basic CRUD operations like writing data, reading it, and also deleting data as well. So let me show you how to do this by jumping into the code. So I've opened up a brand new Flutter project, and just to keep everyone on the same page, in my main function, I'm running my app, which brings us to this home page. And this is just a stateful widget returning a blank scaffold. So we should just have a blank white app like this. Now, the first thing for us to do is to go to your pubspec.yaml and let's add the Hive dependencies in. And by the way, if you want to know more detail about Hive, I'm actually just looking at the Hive documentation. And so have a look at this documentation if you want some more detail about everything that I'm doing in this video. But just to show you real quick, I'm going to start by adding in the dependencies. So we actually have to add in a couple of these ones. So Hive itself, but then also the Hive Flutter version. And we also need to add in the dev dependencies, these two packages as well. So again, that's just from the documentation. And I'll show you how to initialize, open the box and all the CRUD operations. So like reading, writing and deleting. And I'll just show you the basic operations there. So once you've imported the packages, just save it. And let's close this file once that's done. And in the main function. First thing we have to do is to initialize our hive. So let's say hive dot. Now if you click on this, we should be able to import this one here. So that's what we specified in the pubspec.yaml. And so we should be able to see in it flutter. Now one thing about this is we should change this to asynchronous and we can await this one. So now that we've initialized the hive, the next thing to do is to open the box. So a box is kind of like a representation of a database. So for example, say like var box is equal to hive and then just open a box. And we can call this box anything you like, but I'm just going to call it my box. So on your local device, in the storage, it should have a little database called my box. And if you want to store different databases, you can actually just change these names as well. Okay, so I'm just going to call it my box for now. And if I come to the home page, what I'm going to do is let's create a few buttons. And so if I click them, I want to be able to read, write and delete data as well. And so let's just start by in the body of the scaffold in the middle, let's just create a row of buttons. So I'm going to just use a material button. And we'll specify the method in just a second. Let's just create a write button. And let's create a couple more. So the next one, let's say read and delete. Sweet, so there's our three buttons. Let's just space this out. And make the colors a bit lighter. Okay, cool. Now in each of these buttons, I want to create a method. And so let's have a write data method. And then we'll have a reading data method and we'll also have a delete data method. Okay, so let's say void write data, void read data, and void delete data. And then also at the very beginning, we should reference our box. I'm going to call it my box. And this will be the hive box, which we called it 
what do we call it? We'll just call it my box. Okay, make sure at the beginning in the main function, we're going to open the box. And then in the rest of the code, we can just access it using this bit of code. Okay, so we put it in this variable. And now if I want to write data, all I need to do is say my box dot put. So there's actually add as well. You can just add and it will just increment to the next one. But I want to show you the put option. So you can specify a key and a value. So for example, let's say the key is one and the value I'm going to say, let's just use some names. So Mitch. Okay, so if I call this method, when I hit this button, it will add the name Mitch to this key value. And just so that we can uh, see if it's actually in the database, let's just print it out as well. Okay, and I can say my box dot get one. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to hit write. And you can see that it prints out the name, which we just put in. So using the keys like one, two, three, four, we can use these to separate out the data. Now the mybox.get, this bit of code is actually something we should use for reading, right? Like if I want to read the data, then we can just print this one. Let's give this read data method to this button and may as well give this the delete button. And so if I save this, if I hit write, then we're going to place my name in the box. And then if I hit read, then it will read the information at this key value. Okay, so one thing just to note, I could say, let's put in, in the key two, and let's put in John, right? So if I save this and I hit write, then at the key value of two, we're going to put John in. And so if I read the data, it should still say Mitch because I'm getting a key value of one. But if I put two in here and I read it, then we should just get John. Cool, which brings us to this last operation, which is deleting the data. And similarly, this is just, we can say my box dot delete. And again, you can see there's a lot of other operations here, like delete all or delete at a certain index. But I'll just show you the basic delete operation. And so if I say key value of one, and I want to delete that one, that means we should no longer have Mitch. Okay, so if I just save this, and I change this read data to one. So if I read it right now, we have Mitch at the key value of one. But if I delete this at the key value of one, if I read again, we should have null because we deleted it at that key value. So hopefully that made sense. So on a very basic level, that's how we use Hive. And I think it's very simple and easy to use. One little extra thing I'll note is you don't actually have to put in a one string in here. Like you could put in a list of objects. So for example, like let's say Mitch and his age is 26 and you know, favorite color is purple, something like that. Like you can put a whole list in here as well. And so if I just write this information in the key value of two, and then if I read this, you can see it will return the entire list. Okay, so in the value you can put integers and strings, but 
not even just the individual variables you can put an entire list in there as well so using this you should be able to get very far in storing information on your local disks for your app so hopefully that was easy to understand just play around with it and let me know if you have any issues but other than that thanks for watching and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace